So my sister-in-law is a thief. I can't prove it, not yet, but I will find evidence to prove that she stole a family heirloom, something she's been eyeing for a long time, my wedding ring. Someone in another place suggested I post here. Hopefully my story belongs here. I'm on mobile phone, so sorry for formatting. Also, this might be a bit of a long post because of the amount of background info I might have to share. The names are fake and changed, but you know what? The situation is unfortunately very, very real. My sister-in-law, Ashley, has always hated me. From the moment I got with my now husband, Stan, who is the older twin of her husband, Jake, she's always hated me. The first thing she ever said to me was, I'm the longest lasting girlfriend. And since that day, there's been this weird unspoken competition where she's always trying to belittle me, making me feel small and insecure. For example, she unnecessarily made comments about my sister's marriage. She's just jealous or something and always has something to say to demean me. The only time I confronted her resulted in me being in the wrong because I should have just left it alone. My mother-in-law has an heirloom ring, Sapphire Bloom, which should go to the older son's bride by tradition. The ring is decades old and was expertly crafted by Stan's grandfather. His grandmother had it as her wedding ring and it's been passed through the family since the 70s. A few weeks prior to Ashley's marriage to Jake, she came to Stan to ask if they could use the heirloom ring to marry. She told him that Jake told her that their money wanted his wife to just get married wearing the ring that she wore at her wedding. I had no idea why he told her this because mother-in-law definitely did not promise him for her wedding ring. Stan was actually planning on having me wear it at our wedding and talk to his mom about it. She agreed and said that that was the plan because Stan is the older one, you know, having been born seven minutes earlier. I wanted to have this ring because I love to have special jewelry that passed down from generations to generations. So Stan told Ashley that he could not let her have the ring. She was very unhappy about not getting it and I thought that she'd let it go and look into finding a similar one. But she and Jake got into a huge fight about it, and Jake called Stan that night crying. He told Stan that Ashley was crying because of him, and he yelled at him that he should have just as much right to the ring as him because he is mother's son too. But Stan reminded him that he got a lot of their mom's money in the past, and I thought that was the end of it, but it was not. Ashley has been bullying Jake ever since they got married, and everybody knows it. At first, I did not spend a lot of time with his family, so I wasn't sure what his relationship with his wife was. It seemed good. They went on trips, worked, had parties, and did things with friends. And Every time I saw them, life seemed pretty good. They were definitely more high-strung than Stan and I, so they'd argue about things, but it wasn't screaming matches. As I got to know them better, I began to see the subtle signs that something wasn't right. Ashley's insecurities manifested into controlling behavior and constant criticism towards Jake. Honestly, he's a super nice guy and a great dad. He does what she tells him to do and the lion's share of the housework, but he has no drive, no passion, no spark. I've known the guy for several years and I can't recall an interesting conversation with him at all. All he talks about are things Ashley likes and all he cares about is her happiness and well-being. He looked trapped in a cycle of catering to her desires at the expense of his own interest. Everyone else in the family started noticing it too. When someone talked to them about this, Jake would brush it off with a casual remark that everything is fine when clearly it's not. In conclusion, Ashley's crazy, extremely insecure and unhappy with herself and her marriage. The only reason I tried being nice to her is constantly just because everyone in the family doesn't like her and wishes Jake didn't marry her. So I didn't want her to feel alone. During my wedding, Ashley was wearing a very, very pale pink dress. Almost white, not just pure white though. I never wanted a wedding dress as I hate how I feel in dresses and when I was 10, no family member could make me wear one. So instead of a wedding dress, I decided to wear white flared pants with ruffles. On the top, I wore a loose white satin top with a golden corset. I also had some golden jewelry. It was my heirloom wedding ring, of course, my necklace, and some hair jewelry that complemented my blonde curly hair. Everyone knew that I wasn't going to be wearing a wedding dress, but in no way would I think that someone would wear one to my wedding. It's true. 
I don't care about dresses, but I still wanted to be the only beautiful woman on this day. Stan and I confronted her and Jake about this, and she said that she started to save money for the tailor to make the dress that she always wanted, and that my wedding was the perfect time to wear it since I didn't care about dresses. It was annoying, but I chose to not let it ruin my mood. A couple weeks later, we were over at her place for dinner. I could see her eyes light up with greed the moment she saw my wedding ring. She reached her hand out and asked to wear it just one time, then pouted like a child when I told her no. For all I knew, she would take off running the second she got it. Then she kept insisting I take it off while helping to clean up so it would not get damaged and put it somewhere safe, like her jewelry chest upstairs. I declined and kept it on. However, my ring is really flashy and I was scared I would forget the ring somewhere, so I decided to wear it only on special days, which means nearly twice to three times a year. The rest of the time I left it on a little plate inside my drawer so as not to lose it and then lock the drawer just to keep the key behind the pillow on our bed. I've been doing this for the past six years. Recently, Ashley was over at our house for a family dinner. She suddenly had to go use the bathroom and went upstairs to use it, and she was a bit late and I was suspicious. So I quietly went up to check, and as soon as she saw me, she panicked because she knew that she wasn't supposed to be snooping around there. She said that she could not find the bathroom, to which I pointed out the obvious bathroom that she would have had to pass through to get to our master bedroom. The next week, I wanted to wear my ring for mother-in-law's upcoming birthday, but when I opened my drawer, it was gone. This is where the stress and panic started, and of course, my first thought is that I misplaced it. I threw the house upside down for 45 minutes, and I tore apart my room several times and dug through the trash as well, but to no avail. I checked the spare room, the bathroom, behind the toilet, the drains, I moved the furniture, looked inside bags and cupboards, I searched under appliances, in our cars, my purse, everywhere, all over the clothing pockets, the laundry, drawers, under rugs, everything, it was nowhere. Even I ripped open the vacuum cleaner bag and stalked my dog on his walk just to make sure he didn't need it. It was gone. I looked in the rooms again, and this time with the help of my sister and her boyfriend. They began searching for it, helping me move the furniture and suggesting spots to look through, even though I was never hanging around there. Still no trace. I was at the wit's end here, and I knew things don't just vanish. I knew that it had to, well, gone missing. I must have misplaced the ring. It would have been in one out of maybe three rooms, and that I would have found it by now. All the leaves is my family and my own blood. I honestly didn't know what to think or feel, but I could not shake this nagging feeling that it was one of them. Unfortunately, there's no cameras in the house, and after double-checking and triple-checking each room, I started considering who might have taken it. My dad? No, 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 because he's unaware of the ring's worth and would not have talked or to me about keeping it safe if he knew. That's just his nature. We asked if he's been in the room and he said no, and my dad's genuinely honest of a person and would never lie, and my sister and her trustworthy boyfriend? No, because they could not join the dinner and it's been months since they visited us. My daughter? No way, she's six years old and she doesn't even know about the ring. The worst thing is she's done in her life is solve the problem of a tangled headphone by giving them a haircut. So that leaves Ashley, who has a history of hating me, and is only one who was really excited to see my ring in the first place, and would not stoop as low as to steal it. I mean, if it wasn't her, that leaves the homeless guy, but we haven't seen him in the area for months. And plus, why would he break in, come to our room, dig behind the pillow, and steal the ring inside of, you know, not take the cash though, laying right there in the dresser? <laughs> However, I wanted solid proof and evidence before I talked to her about it because if she didn't do it and I made an accusation against her, this could cause irreparable damage. When I went to mother-in-law's house to celebrate her birthday, Ashley was there with Jake. I looked at her and you know what? She has my ring. She has the exact same thing. I recognized it. I was so, so ducking angry. It was more so just like who would want to steal their sister-in-law's wedding ring? Weird. I specifically asked her when we received the ring whether she was okay with me having it. She said that she didn't want it anymore because it's a beautiful ring, but ugh, I feel like it's not my personal taste, she said, and that Jake got her a nice new ring. 
I can't believe she's now wearing the same ring which she claimed that she didn't want anymore, and I was trying to contain myself because it's not a big deal and it's just materialistic things, but I was fuming and I was annoyed. I told her in private about how much the ring meant to me and that I was very upset that she took it. Something about her reaction seemed off. For example, she said that she had no idea which ring I was talking about, and then yelled for me, uh, you know, accusing her of stealing and talked about how she was insulted and how I probably just lost the ring. I maintained that if I did, I would have found it already, and I mean, I'd be insulted too, but honestly, I have to consider all possibilities at this point. She explained that hers is a $25,000 ring that Jake spent over a year saving up for. He got her a ring because they've been together for 10 years and allegedly a new ring is what you would give someone on the 10 year mark. I told her that my ring was cut and remade because I have very slim fingers and that left it with a patch visible on the side so it was unique. She claimed hers was cut and remade too and she wasn't making sense and kept stuttering. She did admit that he didn't even buy it but then backtracked and clarified that he bought the ring and that the wedding band was separate. I thought it was all weird and did not make one lick of sense. Then she proceeded to tell me that I must have put my ring somewhere safe and that there was a gap in my memory because I could not remember where safe was. When I told her nothing like that happened, she said that my daughter should have stolen it probably. I told her she's a kid and asked her, with what brain cell did you say something like that? I've not found a ring in any of my daughter's things and don't think that she took it. She said that sometimes kids do stupid things for absolutely no reason at all. I don't know, maybe she ate it, she said. Well, Stan was coming towards us and I transitioned the conversation to something else. Later, I asked Jake, oh, I saw Ashley got a new ring. He replied that he felt sorry for me as he heard about me losing my ring. I said, yeah, I have no hard feelings towards whoever stole it. I'm not sure what to say. I just really feel for them and hope nothing happens to them. He asked what I meant and I told him that my superstitious Brazilian grandmother had performed some traditional ritual on it that's uh, usually known to curse anyone who takes or handles the ring other than the owner. He looked uneasy and asked me a couple more questions about this ritual and I made some story up about how my ring <laughs> had been taken by a burglar who was crushed by a pillar of cement on his way out of the house. I totally made this entire ritual up, and, well, I do have a Brazilian grandmother, but obviously she did not do some ritual to my ring. That is when he opened up about how Ashley was the one who stole my ring, and how she forced him to keep his mouth shut. He said that he wanted to tell me everything, but did not have the courage to go against his wife. He now told me about all the instances where she has stolen from family members and friends, such as when mother-in-law wanted her whole family together for Thanksgiving. She stole a bunch of stuff from her house, jewelry, sports, memorabilia, knickknacks, stuff that would be easy to sell on eBay. Well, when confronted, she apparently told mother-in-law that she was being cruel to rub it in when all she wanted was family time. Stan and I did not know about this, and the other day her friend allowed her to stay with him and she stole cash from him, and her kid stole his stepson's video game. I asked Jake to get her to return the ring, and I would not press any charges against her but he said that she never listens to him and does whatever the heck she wants. So I called her immediately and told her that her husband just told me everything about how she's a serial family thief, and I dared her to accuse my daughter again. She listened in stunned and silence and said that she would stop bringing my daughter up immediately uh, into this if I stopped accusing her of stealing. She keeps denying it even after her own husband revealed it. She asked me not to talk about superstitial, nonsensical things to Jake because it's BS. I had the pictures of the ring. I wanted to try to replicate the ring and took them to a jeweler who said that he could make a similar ring based on the pictures, but he'd want to closely examine the original and take proper management and measurements to make an evaluation of the stones and metal in order to see what it'd take to make as close as a replica as possible. But I did not have the original. The jeweler looked at the pictures very closely for a little while and said it was worth more than what we thought. And to copy it would cost a lot. The diamond and sapphires are decently large for a wedding ring and the ring itself did not use a slim gold band, but a thick one, heavy one, made of what's estimated to be about 18 carats of gold. 
but there's more. The stones themselves are set in platinum, and the ring has more ornate floral carvings on it. The stones alone needed to make an identical ring is more than my current budget, and not to include antique value, making a copy of a ring like that with the variety of materials would cost a lot. And it'd be time, labor, because every part of it would have to be handcrafted. It's five times what I saved up. So, the jeweler suggested that they have one made that looks the same. It didn't need to be made of the exact same materials, and they can use a center stone that looks something like a diamond, and replace the platinum with a similar metal. I can't remember the name of it, but it would reduce the cost by like 90%. There was also a suggestion of looking for a modern ring that looks similar to what's already made, which would be far cheaper as well. In fact, the jeweler already had three rings set aside that looked almost similar, with a central diamond and sapphires, and all very reasonably priced, but I want my original ring, it's precious to me. I know this seems dramatic, but goodness gracious, I've been nothing but kind to Ashley and now I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm devastated and completely gutted. I feel empty, hollow, and complete. I know this is dramatic. I know logically that material items can be replaced, and that's what matters is that Stan and I are safe and healthy in a good place. But it was his grandmother's ring, a family heirloom, and my absolute dream of a perfect ring. I love every imperfection, every scratch that's proved its age, every minuscule notch in the band. I loved how it sparkled in the sunlight and how it hung on my finger. I love that it, well... Meant I'm his and he's mine. We're supposed to be spending the holidays at her house and I'm planning to just stay at home by myself since I know Stan will likely go. I don't have the courage to tell him about the ring. I'm about to go out with him in the next 10 minutes and I don't know what to do. I don't want to possibly ruin the mood of our outing by mentioning it, but my own mood already has taken a turn. Also, please don't castigate me for being careless. I already feel like an idiot. There are so many moments I keep replaying in my mind wishing I had done something differently and when Ashley went upstairs. Playing back each and every second, I've blocked her on Instagram stories, removed her from close friends, and I got one of those creepy spy cameras to put in my room just in case. I haven't told my friends because I'll break down crying if I do. I'm pretty embarrassed. I guess I'm posting this hoping for suggestions of what else I could do. Or maybe someone else has been through this awfulness. Has anyone out there ever been through this, or am I the only irresponsible clown that managed to allow a family member to steal their wedding ring? Update number one. Thank you, everybody, for the advice. I simply did not expect to get so many responses. I'm really grateful for all your responses. They've made me realize I'm the sane one here. I have a minute to answer some questions. I might not be able to answer everyone though, but I'll try. Number one, no, Stan is not the golden child. His parents always treated them equally, but it's true that he was the one that got better grades, better looks, and was more athletic, but they both were very much loved. Number two, you're right. Everyone can feel beautiful at a wedding. I used the wrong words. I'm sorry about that. Number three, no, the ring was not insured. Number four, I do want to take her to court for this, but my parents are blowing up my phone saying family should not sue each other and just to let it go. Stan and I were out shopping and I was replying to everyone's comments and Stan was asking me if I was getting flamed on the internet. And I was like, no, I'm actually just replying to a post. <laughs> he noticed I was posting here and was like, what relationship advice do you need? I told him I would tell him later. Update number two. Dear all, I have an update on the situation, and unfortunately, it's not the best one. I bumped into Ashley today, and I saw the ring, and I could not hold myself back, so I ended up snatching it from her finger without thinking twice. She was mad at me and started yelling in front of everyone, and she held up her hand in the manner one does when they expect you to put a ring on their finger, and outright demanded the ring back while saying it was her right to wear it, and that I would not need it because I'd go to waste it with me. Oh boy, did that make me angry? And she clearly noticed because she took a couple of steps back and it wasn't hers and she knew it. That's why she went out of her way to steal it because she hoped that I would demand it back if she used it. But she never had a right to it. Then I said that it's entitled people like her that are what's wrong with the world today. 
She acts like whatever she wants should just be handed to her, and she lost it after my ring ever since I first showed it to her. Rather, she should have just made a cheaper version of my expensive ring if she could not afford it. That whole speech was a bit long-winded with some conjectures, I know, but I just could not hold myself back verbally anymore. Stan used to tell me that if I wanted to insult anyone, I always figured out exactly what to say. After I said all of that to her face, she said that she felt thoroughly humiliated by me. Well, she didn't aim to slap me, but I guess the look in my eyes was enough to make her turn away and storm out instead, while very loudly making some sort of unintelligible tantrum noise that hurt my ears. She even eventually knocked down a counter display on her way out. Jake was glaring at her with absolute rage, but didn't say anything until I asked him why he was with this awful woman, and he just said that he loved her and followed her. To his credit, she's very beautiful, but is really just skin deep. I think that's everything, guys. Thank you so much for your words and kindness. Any advice you drop in the comments, I'm much appreciated for. Update number three. Hey guys, Ashley called Stan this afternoon and told him now I'm always causing her trouble. He started to look worried and I didn't want him to think that it was anything serious, so I talked to him about losing the ring, which I think I should have done a long time ago. The tears immediately started, but he comforted me and kept saying it's okay, and I was still really upset and I was like, no babe, it's not. And he was insistent that he wasn't mad. He said that he'd get another ring, but I told him to hold out since I was irresponsible in the first place. I also told him that I believed Ashley had taken the ring and that Jake had informed me about her history of stealing from the family. Stan revealed to me that he had a micro engraved coordinates of the place where we got engaged in the ring, which could be later erased. Ashley could not lie to me anymore. With this new info, I called her, but she did not answer. So I messaged her that we had proof that the ring was mine and that we would go to the police and get them involved if she did not return the ring. Well, that finally made her talk to me and she tried to say that I could not do that to her because she is family. I said I could and would because she outright stole the ring and she'd better bring it back right away or we would take drastic measures. Well, she called me right after that and in a whisper, she said that I was bluffing about having proof, plus it was too late. And besides, I would not go that far. I said I do have the proof and will do whatever it takes just to make sure it's returned. And if that means going to the police and blowing the whole situation up, then so be it. I'll file a report. I'll even get a lawyer. Ashley started crying and saying I could not do this to her. I told her tough luck. She stole from both her brother-in-law and sister-in-law and I would not back down until the ring was returned. She wouldn't stop crying and making excuses. So I told her to leave the ring back by the morning or I would be moving forward with legal action. She said she's coming in the morning to talk and ended the phone call while crying even more. The last time I met someone who cried that much about being made to return stolen property, well, they were four years old. Jake called me an hour ago and said that she would not talk to him and told him that they were through because she felt like he didn't value her enough to let her keep the ring she deserved. Well, Jake has officially broken up with her and she's devastated and blaming me. And cried that people will think she's a gold digger now. I mean, um, she literally stole gold from me and tried to slap me just for suggesting she gets a copy of my ring. <laughs> and while it's an assumption on my part, exactly how long would she have stayed with Jake if someone rich came along and swept her off her feet? Would she have been inclined to still stand by him? Something tells me, well... No. Final update. I got my ring. Well, well, well. Ashley did show up, and, well, it was in the morning and brought her parents with her and tried to guilt us. She did not bring the ring and tried to convince us to let her keep it, well, because Jake was born only seven minutes late. We asked her why she felt that she deserved the ring, and especially after breaking up with Jake. She told me that they're only temporarily separated and have no plans to divorce. She said that she's been completely in love with the ring since she first laid eyes upon it. Stan told her, well, he didn't care. She can have a jeweler make a copy of it or something, but the original doesn't belong to her. It belongs to his wife. He looked her dead in the eyes and said that his family ring would never be hers. She begged me for one more time just to make her give it back, but Stan and I stood firm. 
She called me selfish, an evil woman, and left. When we reached home, Stan called the cops and she got arrested. They went to her house just to arrest her, and it was disturbing. They found photos of Stan going out at the house or at his bed when he was a teenager. There were even photos of us while we were on family vacations or someplace, and at the police station, she confessed everything because she didn't have any option. She said that Stan was true love, and when he broke up with his ex, she wanted him for herself, but he went for me, and I was a homewrecker. This wasn't the reason I thought. I thought it's just, you know, it was some jealousy for not having the ring because it's a family ring, but this is not what I expected. Even the police officer was horrified and shocked someone could do something like this, and this stuff is literally their job. Stan's quiet. We talked, but I can tell he's still hurt. Mother-in-law and father-in-law were absolutely horrified. Ashley's family is going to contact her, and she's currently in prison for trespassing, stalking, sexual harassment, and I think she's also being evaluated for mental health problems, but I don't really know the details. Father-in-law guaranteed she won't be around us, and they will handle her. Anyways, the ring's back in my hand, and I looked at it with my mouth open, me and Stan looked at each other shocked but happy and then had a jeweler look at it just to check the micro engraving to be 100% sure it was really my ring. I put it inside a security safe, which is kept at the top of my closet and only I have access to it. And the ring will remain there until our daughter is 21 and may even stay there if she wants to keep it safe that way. Stan got me a new ring, a five carat pear rose gold double halo ring, ugh because of our new journey in life as we've grown so much. This ring was on sale, so we managed to get it at a surprisingly low price. We tried getting family support from friends and others, but we got the opposite reaction we hoped for, especially from my family side. They're all mad at us over what we've done. I got many phone calls and nasty messages from people saying that we were not on Stan's side. I tried to do damage control, but now everybody knows. However, Stan still stands by the fact that she had to return the ring. We know that we're in the right to have reclaimed it. Ashley called me from prison today. She's blaming me and my witch doctor grandmother, saying she's now cursed for having touched the ring. I passed the phone to Stan, who tried to calm her down, but she was hysterical. I told Stan about the ring thing, and he kept laughing for like one to two minutes. He then told her not to worry about the curse because it would have no effect on anyone who touched it without malicious intent. Stan and I won't have anything to do with her. I won't be on this account anymore because I just want to forget about this and move on. Anyways, to the people who read my old post back then, I want to thank you for all the support and all the details. Uh, that is going to be fine for me and thank you for hoping and praying. So Ashley got what she deserved. I mean, she was manipulative and she just did so many things that landed her behind a jail cell. But I don't know. I just couldn't let it go. The fact that for so long for this story, it was so obvious that she stole the ring. She was literally wearing it at the family events and everybody around her was just pretending like, oh no, I bought this ring new. It just looks identical to a ring that was 40 years old. I mean, that part just made absolutely no sense to me. If somebody stole my ring like that and I'm sitting there at the table looking at it, I'm going to confront them and not try to gather evidence I don't know. That part was really weird. Anyways, I want to know your thoughts about how the story ended, how it exactly went down, and the fact that they made up a ritual that was on the ring as a curse was cracking me up, guys. Let's talk about it downstairs in our comments section. My name is Mr. Redito, and I narrate stories like this every day. So, if you want to be a part of these daily readings, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and of course, it's cool to be kind. Peace.